G'day ladies and gents and welcome back to War Thunder with Mags and welcome to War Thunder Ground Forces. Today we're taking a look at the first of the Japanese tanks that I'm going to cover on this channel. Today we're taking a look at the Rank 3 Battle Rating 4.3 Type 4 Chito. The Chito is armed with a 75mm Type 5 cannon with a maximum of 120 rounds of ammunition if you wish to take a full ammunition load, a 7.7mm Type 97 machine gun with 3000 rounds of ammunition, Armour wise this one is reasonably well armoured, front armour is 75mm with 35 to the sides and 75 to the rear on the hull with 75mm of armour to the front of the turret, 50 to the sides and 50 to the rear. However while the main armour is fairly thick for its battle rating it is not incredibly sloped and only 18 degrees of back slope and angling the armour can be quite difficult especially in the hull department with the top section of the front hull tapering back at around 45 degrees. While this armour is angled back at the same 18 degrees as the front of the tank, it's also only 50 millimetres thick and leads directly into the internals of the tank, the ammo racks and the main crew compartment. While this section is a relatively small target, it is nonetheless an extremely vulnerable one. Mobility wise, the Type 4 Cheeto is... well it's not horrible, but I've definitely seen better. Turret traverse speed is 11.9 degrees per second with a maximum 17 degrees elevation, negative 11 degrees depression. Hull traverse however is pretty abysmal, requiring a lot of work to actually turn this tank around. Although its straight line speed of 45 kilometers an hour is not bad for its 30 ton mass. The gun of this tank however is extremely good with an 8.3 second reload with a well trained crew. Although it does come with the limitation of only having two shell types available. A standard HE shell which as with most HE shells on a 75mm gun is really only situational, good for dealing with self propelled anti-aircraft guns, not particularly effective on anything else. And the Type 1 AP HE shell which will be your primary and sole choice of main ammunition. This isn't actually a bad shell, 6.6 kilogram shell, 830 meters per second velocity, which is not too bad, with a TNT equivalent of 67.84 grams. Penetration at 10 meters is 145 millimeters, which drops to 139 millimeters at 100 millimeters. At 1,000 meters, it will still penetrate through 118 millimeters of armor, capping out at maximum at 81 millimeters of penetration at 2,000 meters. These are reasonably good numbers, especially considering the battle rating of the tank. As a general rule, I'm pretty happy with this tank's gun. It has allowed me to deal with anything that I've faced at its battle rating without too much of an issue, and have actually managed to up tier this tank into 5.7 matches and still been extremely effective in it. The catch to this tank, of course, is the armor and its agility. If you get flanked in this tank, it is extremely difficult to turn around in order to face your enemy. The armor is not particularly fantastic. While 75mm does seem to be pretty good, you can't angle it. That 50 millimeters on those front tapered back plates are massive weak spots and because the back angle on the plates themselves is so low, that 75 millimeters only comes up as 77 effective directly from the front. As a result, I've found the Chito to be most effective and most dangerous in city fighting like what you see here, where you can stick that weak point behind a wall and bring a, the forward armor of your tank out exposed at an extreme angle. Doing this, it's quite easy to angle your front armour out to well over 100mm with a deflection rating that will cause most shells to simply bounce. Now I'm going to be honest, I don't exactly know what happened there with that KV-1. That shell should have gone straight through the side armour of that turret at that range, but that's alright, it had absolutely no problem getting through the hull armour. So as I said, I found the Cheeto to operate best inside of a city environment, or at least a small town such as you see here. In open ground, it's extremely easy to flank this tank. Uh, T-34s will get around this with no problems at all and dig at the side armor, which is extremely vulnerable. And from long ranges, you sort of have to angle your front armor, otherwise you're gonna get pinned directly through the front. But doing so does present an extremely vulnerable weak spot on those front corners, which is nowhere near as hard to hit as you may actually think. While the targets do appear to be small, it is worth remembering that this tank is actually bigger than a KV-1. And a sneaky Cromwell makes his way up from the center cap point. He's busy checking the right hand side and doesn't spot a sitting in there. One shot disables the guns, second shot sets the engine on fire and disables the tank. I moved back here for a little bit because I thought he was going to actually get a shot off out of the gun but realized he's replaced the gunner but the gun itself is still disabled so we'll just roll forward and put one straight through its side to finish it off. So once again securing the A cap and beginning our circle around looking for additional targets at this point. Uh, this seems to be a hot spot. The match itself is not going particularly well at this point. 
with the B and C caps both under enemy control at this point in time, A is all we have. So my first goal here at the moment is just to make sure A stays defended, and then my plan is to push out and try and get to that central cap point and take it as well. We do have a lot of tanks still floating around at this point, however. You can see them on the map, but it looks like the first wave has been taken out. We've got a lot of respawns that are starting to move their way in. The central cap does seem to be the focus of an attack. So it was at this point that I decided I'm going to head to that central cap point and put my gun into the game as well. As I said, the gun in this tank is kind of fantastic. I really do like it. But of course, assuming that the A cap was secure was my biggest mistake. Almost as soon as I clear the cap point, it starts getting decapped. Now at this point you get to see the lack of agility of this tank. It's alright when you're just turning left and right, which is why I continually circled the mosque in the centre of this particular town, and didn't actually try and turn around. Once you actually have to reverse your direction of travel in this tank, the traverse on the hull is really not all that good. It's okay while the tank is rolling forward, but turning it around on the spot at lower speeds is a pain, and it doesn't turn particularly tightly. So our friend in the Chinu appears to have spotted a target. This guy was actually a bit of a legend. He paired up on the back of my tank and followed me around for the rest of this match. And we have a T-34. And goodbye T-34. But I did see what looked to be a Panzer IV crossing over around the back of the map. Sitting in behind the mosque. So we'll just continue straight through. Cut down around the side. He should have his turret looking towards the rear. See if we can get a shot into his front plate. Nope, he's looking in our direction. But no matter. Straight through the front plate. Execute the crew. And there is our next kill. So once again we have re-secured the position and we are recapping, and things haven't changed much on the rest of the map. The enemy team still secures both the B and C caps, they're still holding them down, and I still want to get over to that central cap point and see if I can give some assistance in actually taking it. So I'm just getting ready to roll out again, and that's when this cheeky little bugger shows up, and manages to take out my gunner before I can actually get the shot off on him, and he backs off. So quickly drop an artillery strike. It looks like he backed off around those buildings. So I'm going to dig in here just in case he decides to poke his head back out and have another crack. And while I'm here, since I'm in the cap circle anyway and I've just lost a crew member, time to use that crew member replacement option and actually replace it just in case I need it later. And it looks like our team finally got it together and managed to take the central cap point. So now it's two on one, we're finally starting to dig down the enemy team's points. Unfortunately, the artillery strike didn't seem to hit anything. Taken out a lot of buildings and made a lot of noise, but has done very little else. So I'll just hold position while I'm replacing the crew member, because, well, I don't really have much of a choice anyway. And then it's time to go looking for him. Now that looked like a ZUT-37. Light tank, but a reasonably good gun. Can penetrate my armor without too much of an issue. So I'm not going to go straight up around that corner. I don't want him to get a clean shot into the crew compartment. He could mess me up in a real hurry. So I'm going to take it down this side alley and start smashing my way through these gates. And see if we can get around on his flank. through the second gate, and it looks like nobody's here. Just quickly spin the camera around and check behind, make sure he hasn't tried to run around and flank down the sides, but it doesn't appear to be anybody in this area. So we'll roll up first and quickly check down the bridge, then check to the left hand side and see if we're still down there. Nope, we're clear. And for a second I thought he was going to drive straight out in front of me, but no, it's the Chi Nu coming to check the bridge too, and he's gone around the back way, so the little bastard's disappeared. I figure he must have turned around and run back across the bridge trying to flank, so best bet is to drive up and try and follow. And then the A-cap starts getting decapped again. It's like they didn't want me to leave this town. So once again, turn this thing around, drop another artillery strike around where I reckon the target will probably be. Again, I'm not expecting this artillery strike to hit anything, but if I can try and push him out of cover, get him worried that we're coming back, anything that can actually delay him actually capturing this point because we we're down to under half points at this time we can't afford to let the enemy team actually take this cap the chinu is going up to the left come down through the path that i opened up by smashing down the gates i'll go the direct path into the central circle uh, the north side of the mosque is clear check down around the right Nothing up the side alleys, there's nothing in the gap, the Chinu has cleared that himself. 
and it doesn't look like he's down around the immediate back of the mosque either, which means he's in the, the southern part of the circle, in amongst the building somewhere. And he's just left the circle, because we're now capping it back. Now, there's two points where you can sit inside of the circle in cover. One of them is over here, and the other one is back in the opposite direction. Swing down here, and I can't see anything from this point. So I start turning the tank around to head the other side, but the Chinu fires a shot and takes out a Cromwell. So there was one just hidden up around the corner, right near where I was that I couldn't see. Luckily he was around a spot, otherwise I could have potentially been flanked there. So, with the A-cap secured again, it's time to start heading out again and heading towards the B-point in the central section of the map, as we have lost that cap point. Thankfully we do have somebody over capping C at this very moment. At this point it's very important that we try and take all three cap points. Even controlling two, we're so low on points at this time, that the enemy team still has a chance at winning even controlling only a single point. I wouldn't actually call this match at this time. So, I could go by the gate to my left, I decided to go by the gap to the right. As you'll notice, the front of the tank is covered in bushes in order to try and camouflage it a little bit, because it is a massive target, and there is a lot of bushland out here. So if I can get the tank out and amongst the scrub, it should be slightly harder to detect. And then we see a Matilda making its way in. Now I fire the first shot, the shot misses, the Matilda just keeps going. I don't know if he was unaware of the fact that he just got shot at. I'm not even entirely sure how that shot missed, to be perfectly honest. That should have gone straight through his side plate. Regardless, he appeared to have absolutely no idea as to what was going on and continued to advance forward through to the cap point. I'm not going to get a shot straight on him directly, but put one through the building into the back of his tank, collapse the building in the process, and we've managed to disable his engine. Now normally I'm not too concerned about a Matilda's gun, but this thing is very flat and I am engaging in close range, so one shot through the side of the turret, that disables the gun and the turret ring. Rotate through on the reload and straight into the side hull. And execute the Matilda. But as you can see, once again the A-cap has been decapped and is currently being capped by the enemy team, so there is somebody in the circle. So once again we roll back to the cap point to see whether or not we can ferret them out and remove them. So quickly check up through the gap to see whether or not we can see the target, and sure enough, there is the ZUT-37, one shot straight into the side, and that is him removed from the match again, my fifth kill, double strike award, and back into the cap circle again, once again to recap A. I swear, the enemy team did not want me leaving this cap circle. Thankfully, we're now taking back A, and it looks like our forces have managed to take the B cap as well, and is currently in the process of capping that, so we've managed to take three. With three caps down, we can drag their points down so quickly that we now actually have a chance of winning this one. I am, however, keeping an ear out. I'm hearing a lot of engine notes. There's a lot of aircraft in the air at the moment, and not all of them are friendly, but nobody appears to be coming here at the moment, so I don't need to make a mad rush out of the circle to look for cover. So just adjusting my angle at the moment, I want to put a slight angle on my front plate just in case anything drives down that alleyway. The Chi Nu is keeping the right hand side clear. And now A cap as taken, we're going to advance out. Looking at the map, the central point, we are starting to progress beyond the B point. It looks like the C point also has tanks just on the north side, so we've managed to push them back towards their spawn points on that side. I need to do the same thing here. If I can get up far enough to prevent them from even crossing the bridge, the A-cap will stay secure. Because to be quite honest at this point, I was really getting sick of capping A over and over and over again. Not that we particularly had to worry, as it turned out at this point there was only one T-34 remaining on the enemy team. They did have seven players total still up, but six of them were in aircraft, circling around trying to attack, and most of those were in fighters that really didn't have the capability of dealing with any of the tanks that were on the ground. From this point we simply rolled towards the cap points, the T-34 was found trying to sneak its way back into the central cap point again and got popped by one of the players defending over there. The match did last for another couple of minutes, but outside of that T-34 getting popped trying to get into the cap point, there was no real additional action on the ground. The rest of the fight happened in the air while we were waiting for the cap points to drop down. So anyways, let's go through to the results. So results for the match, 4th place on the team with 5 kills, 1 assist and 5 base captures. 
This was a particularly high scoring match. If you have a look, there was only five members of the team that didn't score over a thousand points. We got Tank Rescuer X1, one shot, Professional X5, Shadow Strike Streak X3, two multi-strike awards, and a four base capture streak. 48,425 silver lines, with 4,793 vehicle research points and 3,716 modifications research points. This of course almost completed my research of the M24 and unlocked the engine on the Cheeto. Now having said that, since this point I have completely spaded the Cheeto and it doesn't get much better. The engine does help improve its acceleration to top speed, but its overall speed doesn't change that much and it still has that poor low speed traverse on the hull. It's still quite fine at high speed maneuvering, but low speed traverse is definitely a weak point of this particular tank. That being said, the Cheeto is the first Japanese tank that I've unlocked that I think I truly like. I actually really like the turret being slightly off center on the tank. I think it gives it a little bit of character. The armor isn't fantastic. It's got a lot of weak points, but providing you are aware of those weak points, you can work around them. And the gun itself is actually really, really good. Overall, I really do think that this tank is the gem of rank three, and it's one that I think I'll probably be driving quite a lot of in the future. Anyways, ladies and gents, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you very much for watching. Remember to leave a comment in the comment section down below and tell me what you are thinking of all the new Japanese tanks and the new vehicles available in patch 1.65. Also, remember to leave a like if you do, subscribe if you want to see more and you haven't already, and until next time, drive smart, drive safe, and I'll catch you on the battlefield.